should be getting to that shortly. This manual piloting test was slated to last about 25 minutes. As we have been running ahead of schedule today uh, with all of Dragon's maneuvers, uh, we could be looking at a docking only about 25 or 30 minutes from now. So once they're done with this manual flight test, they'll turn control back over to Dragon's flight computers and they'll resume their approach, which had actually already started automatically before the crew issued a hold command to the vehicle. And then they'll press in to arrive at waypoint number two, at which point the teams will do a final go, no go for docking. They'll depart that 20 meter hold point and it should be just about five minutes following that departure until we get contact and captured. Yeah, and the uh, the crew right now are seated in Dragon in uh, in the pilot and commander's seat. Both of them are suited um, for for what are relatively dynamic maneuvers, and they'll uh, continue to be suited until we we have confirmation of of good hard capture on the space station. So right now, just interfacing with the touchscreen displays, testing out manual piloting. Hopefully secretly a little bit giddy to be piloting a, a spacecraft. I mean, before they had launched, Bob Banken had referred to this mission as every astronaut's dream, getting to launch in a new spacecraft, putting it through its paces. He and Doug Hurley with those test pilot backgrounds, testing out a new spacecraft has to be as good as it gets. Uh, but they're still stepping through this manual piloting. Uh, we should have just a few more minutes until they're done uh, with this Y-axis translation. And then they'll be able to turn command back over to Dragon, which will return itself to the docking axis and then begin that approach into waypoint two. Yeah, and as a, as a look ahead, so when, when we do transition into that approach, uh, Dragon will autonomously go towards Waypoint 2, which is just 20 meters away from the forward uh, international docking adapter on Node 2. And uh, it'll hold there. That'll give the, the ground team some time, both in Houston and at, uh, at here in Hawthorne, to do a go-no-go poll, make sure that the vehicle still looks healthy, uh, make sure that everyone on board the space, space station and, and, of course, on board Dragon. SpaceX Dragon, we've completed with the translation maneuvers. We're going to pick up with the closure maneuver. We copy. We're following along with you. All right. Sounds like they're done with their translations. They're going to start moving it back to the docking axis, put us right back on the center line, and then we're going to resume that approach into station.
Dragon SpaceX, you have used two thirds of your prop test budget. I can copy two thirds of the budget. and that completes the closure maneuver. We copy closure maneuver complete. That will move on to 4.041, section 4. We copy and concur. All right, so our manual flight test has been completed. We're standing by for them to now resume approach one. So to move in from a, that waypoint one, uh, we're already inside of the keep out sphere at this point. Dragon's holding just 176 meters from the space station. And pretty soon they're going to be approach. Next Dragon, that completes the manual piloting demonstration. And I only had to twist Doug's arm for two or three minutes to get him to allow me to deactivate the piloting controls. <laughs> We copy. Excellent. Thank you. And with that, we ask that you, from the display used for manual piloting, please go to audio settings and adjust a gain setting for seat one or four. And in addition, we would appreciate any handling qualities evaluation of the proximity piloting possible. We've completed the gain setting adjustment for seat one, and I'll uh, turn it over to Doug for the uh, handling quality quick look. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop for the uh, handling qualities. It uh, flew just about like the fin, so uh, my congratulations to the folks uh, in Hawthorne. That flew really well, very crisp. Uh, it was a little sloppier and wide, just like we saw in the stem, uh, but it, all the other axes, as well as uh, closure and opening, were all just as per. Excellent to hear. Thank you.
that kind of kind of gives you a indication of sort of how the design process works. You know, Bob and Doug have had lots of opportunities to to test this out and sim it and give their feedback. Uh, and pretty cool to hear that their sim experience was very similar to what they saw actually on orbit. Just, uh, you, I think you said 170 meters away from station right now? Yeah, we're just 176, and I, I imagine as a spacecraft designer, that's exactly what you want to hear, is the way that I trained you in it here on the ground is exactly how it performed once you're there for the real thing. So the second manual piloting test in the books Bob and Doug putting Dragon through its paces. Now we're time to put it all to where we get to our end point. We're ready to get Dragon docked to the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. The ground will be resuming approach shortly. We do plan to hold briefly at waypoint two, so reminder that crew visors down is, are not required until the ground is preparing to command the final approach. Six Dragon, we copy. We'll hold uh, at 3.2 for a pause, and then we'll get our visors then once you command. We copy. And station, it's Houston on the big loop. As you've heard, Endeavour is resuming its approach to waypoint two. Chris, you can monitor now for step two. That's step two in one decimal one zero four. Crew Dragon approach and retreat monitor. Copy. Step two will work. Pretty cool view of the International Space Station from Dragon. Uh, this this would actually be overlaid, uh, or rather their controls would be overlaid on the displays um, on top of this view. And we got a, got to see some pretty cool views uh, from behind. Actually, there's a, there's a view right there. You can see the station on their displays. Um, visors up, Doug in the left seat, Bob in the right seat. So this moment, Dragon is going to be resuming the approach. As we heard them informing the crew, they're going to have that uh, one final hold when they're just 20 meters away. That's going to be at waypoint two. We're expecting it to be a brief hold while the teams all tag up and do a final go to move in for docking. Getting a great look at the space station itself. The docking port is right in the center of our screen. You can see another spacecraft currently docked to the space station, the Japanese HTV spacecraft currently docked uh, to the Earth-facing port, uh, one of those common berthing mechanisms also on Node 2. So Dragon will be the second vehicle uh, to be docked to the Harmony module once it makes its uh, final approach. And it's moving in right now. Again, just to give you an idea of how quickly they're moving, they're going at about three tenths of a meter per second right now. And so if you're having any trouble with that docking simulator online, remember to just slow things down a little bit and your chances will go up exponentially. We just passed 140 meters away. Um, we'll get our live video com back with the space station momentarily. As soon as we do, we'll bring you back up there. Uh, but for now, Bob and Doug continuing to fly in. They're just 135 meters away. Station on the big loop uh, in, in step two review of steps three and four is complete. Crews on the International Space Station is ready for uh, docking. Station Houston on the big loop, we copy the review of three and four complete. International Space Station ready, thank you. Expedition 63 Commander Chris Cassidy giving the report station is ready for docking. Yeah, and you can see the uh, the trajectory of the spacecraft. There are small corrections that are happening. So if the, as we get closer and closer to station, we're trying to stay within those two corridors, which are shown coming out of the the docking port that we're going towards. That little dot, I think, was the 20-meter the hold point, so that's where we expect there to be 
uh, the spacecraft holding right in front of the international docking adapter. There'll be a go no go poll. The uh, ground teams have worked hard over the past probably years to come up with a set of what we call flight rules. So those are those are technical constraints items that we look for. Uh, that if any of those criteria were violated, then we have a rule that we've predetermined uh, gives us guidance to say whether we could approach or not. Um, so far, our vehicle has been very healthy, but uh, technical ground teams will all do their due diligence to, to make sure that it's still safe to approach. Right, and at this moment, that approach is continuing, still moving in at about three-tenths of a meter per second. Dragon's coming up on just 100 meters away from the space station. So the very top there is the, the nose cone um, on the spacecraft. We're We've got a cool view. Uh, left side of your screen is the International Space Station. Right side of your screen is Dragon. We're inside 100 meters, continuing to close. Again, we're, we're going to have a short hold at 20 meters. Teams will just do a final check, and then they'll give Dragon the go. We're expecting it to be pretty brief. We should get to that hold point in just about four minutes, moving at our current pace. I think you can see uh, a meatball and an American flag on that uh, on the spacecraft. The uh, the NASA logo, of course, the referred to as the meatball. I think there was some spirited discussion about the meatball versus the worm during ascent. And uh, those are you can see those logos. They're they're that structure on the the fairing structure is actually what the Super Dracos are are housed in. Of course, all of those are deactivated now only used for launch escape during the ascent portion. Nose cone right at the, the top of the vehicle. And uh, you can see sort of the ceiling surface. Those uh, four circular, those four circular uh, slots right underneath the nose cone within that red ring are the, the Ford bulkhead Dracos. That's what we were using while uh, we were conducting all those burns um, the, the five burns to, to get to this point. Right now, we don't, ha we don't have a reason to use those. We'll only be making small attitude corrections with the, uh, with the service section Dracos. And you can see the service section actually pretty clearly here, too. Um, the, uh, there's a black portion and a white portion sort of separated by a fin. The black portion is uh, solar panels solar cells that'll charge Dragon's batteries. And the bottom side, our, uh, the white portion, is actually a thermal radiator that's used to keep, keep the uh, spacecraft nice and cool. Of course, the avionics and the cabin, making sure that Bob and Doug are comfortable inside. It looks like we're getting a shadow cast. We are just 60 meters away, continuing to close in, just about 40 meters to go until we're at that hold point. Should get there in just over two minutes. Meanwhile, teams in Hawthorne and in Houston doing their internal go, no go for docking. They're going to get all the teams pulled. Once everyone's go, we'll be able to give Dragon the final go ahead for the vehicle to autonomously fly in and dock with the International Space Station. Should be coming up on waypoint two arrival in just about one minute, 45 seconds. At this point, it'll be 20 meters away from that docking port. Uh, the International Docking Adapter number two attached to pressurized mating adapter number two at the very forward end of the Harmony module. Right there on the uh, right around the, the center, you can see the Ford hatch. It's got a window in it. You can see a couple of handles. And there's uh, some features that look sort of bronze-ish. Those are the pedals that we were talking about earlier as part of the, the soft capture system. So uh, pretty Pretty wild, too, to see. We're so close that we're getting shadows from the station on Dragon. Wow. And we're getting these views of Dragon's approach from two cameras that are right next to that docking adapter. And the movement's a little, a little jarring at times. Uh, the, these cameras are being commanded by a person at the Cronus console in Mission Control Houston, and they send some uh, some very basic function commands to the camera, which it then executes automatically. And so they're continuing to follow Dragon in, so we do thank them for their diligence to, to give us these views of this historic moment as we are just less than 30 meters away from docking. 
Right above the uh, NASA meatball logo, you can see two, uh, excuse me, three of the, the service section Draco thrusters. That's right, 12 and all. So the four of those clusters spread around the vehicle, used for a lot of the attitude control and any small translational maneuvers like we just watched Bob and Doug execute with their second manual flight test. Yeah, and actually oriented in a way, too, where if you were to lose some of those thrusters, you still have redundancy and, and control in those axes. That's, uh, that's part of the reason why they're sort of at the angles that they are. All right, so we should be getting to waypoint two right now. So it looks like we do have that hold. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. The ground is go for approach two. We will be enabling the resume shortly. As a reminder, ensure your visors are closed prior to Dragon's departure from the waypoint. And once Dragon is inside, the crew hands-off point, retreat, and breakout are not permitted. And for your awareness, we have sunset in a little less than 8.5 minutes. And copies all on the big loop. Go for docking. So Doug on uh, on spacecraft confirming their go for docking. They're going to put down their visors. Got some uh, instructions there about the the crew hands-off point that we had talked about earlier. That's a point where we don't want the the crew issuing any commands to the vehicle. It's about uh, just about two meters away from the docking adapter. I believe the number is about 1.7 meters. Station Houston on the big loop. Houston and station are now go for docking. Chris, you can monitor per steps three and four. Three and four in one decimal one zero four. Crew Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. I'll be steps three and four. Next dragon on the big loop. Our visors are down. Puppy visors down. With the crew confirming their visors down, we should see the final approach resume. Station dragon on the big loop. We are inbound from approach two. Copy inbound. Station copy. And we're going to be racing that sunset. The approach has resumed. Dragon closing in. We're inside 20 meters. And yeah, that, that crew hands off point uh, should come up in about three minutes or so, uh, right before we get that final docking. It comes about 20 seconds prior, or just about two meters away from the station still. And that's uh, just the crew not issuing any abort commands. At that point, it would be uh, too late and so any aborts would be executed automatically by Dragon itself. So we're closing in at less than a tenth of a meter per second at this point. You can see the, the service section Draco is just doing all these very small minor attitude corrections. Really the, the autonomous docking system at work, making sure that the the uh, vestibule and the soft capture system is lined up with IDA2. It's the international docking adapter. You can see much more clearly there the hinge mechanism for the nose cone. Those four uh, black circles are the forward bulkhead Dracos, not to be used at this time. And then, of course, the, the pedals of the soft capture system. Wow. Dragon on the big loop, we're inside 10 meters. We cannot make out the darkest docking target, but we do see the outline. 
We copy and concur, 10 meters. All right, we're less than 10 meters away. Again, we're closing at that rate of less than a tenth of a meter per second. We should be just about one minute, 45 seconds away from docking. There is a, uh, a center line camera right in that middle so that you can see where the forward hatch is. Uh, and right in the middle of that, there's a window and there's a center line camera that is aligned with the center of the vehicle and the center of the docking mechanism. So that is, is what the autonomous docking system is using to line up with uh, sort of a cross hatch, um, cross target on the, the docking port. Again, the forward docking port um, on PMA2, or the pressurized mating adapter. And we are just five meters away. Again, we're racing that sunset. This dragon continues to close, four meters to go. Those shadows of the, of the space station on the vehicle. Yeah, you can actually see the uh, centerline camera pretty clearly there, um, sort of with the contrast of the, the sun right now. Three meters to go. Two meters. We are inside the hands-off point, the chop, the crew hands-off point. One meter to go. Soft capture complete. Dragon. <laughs> Soft capture confirmed. Stand by for retraction and docking. And we just heard it, soft capture. We have docking that coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. You saw a little bit of motion there uh, of Dragon. It was that relative motion that the soft capture system is damping out. Once that motion is, is clear, then uh, the soft capture system will be retract, retracted and uh, Dragon will go for hard capture. Again, if just now tuning in, that soft capture, that docking coming 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the East Coast, Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. So that soft capture ring now going to retract. It's one more step on the way to docking complete. Yeah, and so the, the next step here is once, once the soft capture ring is retracted, there are uh, 12 latches that we refer to as hard capture latches, um, those are what will really create that pressure tight seal between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. So once soft capture is complete, and uh, I believe we'll get that call from, from our core here, Anna, then uh, we'll, get, we'll get confirmation of hard capture. And uh, the crew, of course, aboard have, have this information on their displays. So they'll also see indication of hard capture complete. And uh, once those two steps are done, then that's that's docking complete. That's right. And we're, we're expecting to hear some words from everybody. A pretty monumental moment. I mean, for Doug Hurley, he's returning to where he last docked uh, almost nine years ago on the very last space shuttle mission, uh, now commanding the very first commercial spacecraft to deliver astronauts to the International Space Station. That's, that's got to be cool for them. Uh, they've, they've mentioned quite a few times that their best friends uh, are our favorite dads in space, as we've been calling them. Uh, this, is, this has got to be really cool for them. It's got to be really cool for their families, too, watching this. And 
Looks like we have another quick handover. We'll get that video back shortly. We're about 75% complete already with that retraction. Once that retraction is completed, we'll keep an eye out for the 12 ready to hook indicators. And once those are ready, those 12 hooks will begin to engage and that'll securely attach Dragon to the International Space Station. Yeah, so right now the vehicle confirming that the uh, soft capture system has is deployed correctly and is fully retracted. And then uh, once the soft capture system is fully retracted, that'll set up the vehicle to to put in the hard capture uh, pins. There's 12 of those around the docking ring, and that's what creates that uh, airtight seal uh, between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. The, the, cat, the volume between, which we refer to as the vestibule, is currently not pressurized. Um, of course, it was just exposed to the vacuum of space until uh, literally minutes ago, about four minutes ago. So um, just waiting for the vehicle to get that. Dragon SpaceX. Ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. All right, so we, we see those ready to hook indicators are lighting up green. So we should be just about to step into uh, those 12 hooks beginning to engage uh, to get that secure mate between Dragon and the international docking adapter on the space station. Wow, right now those two vehicles are flying together. They are attached they to are. each other. It's It's been just under 19 hours since we lifted off. We're actually at about 18 hours, 58 minutes, and 42 seconds. So we promised about a 19-hour ride up to station, and we made it just a few minutes before that. Uh, they were able to dock a few minutes ahead of schedule. We were tracking them to still take about another 10 minutes, uh, but able to step through all of their burns about 16 minutes ahead of schedule and get us to where we are now. If you missed it just a few moments ago, that initial docking coming at 7.16 a.m. Pacific, 10.16 a.m. over on the east coast of the United States, and they were 262 statute miles flying together over the uh, northern border of China and Mongolia. So really yeah. exciting. We're just waiting for this docking complete to be confirmed. We're expecting to hear some words, obviously, from the crew on board and all the excited teams down here. We're just waiting for this moment. And then it's time to start getting Dragon integrated into the station. There will be an umbilical that will get mated, and that will allow Dragon to flow data and power into the station systems. And then it will be over to the crew. Endeavour and station at Houston on the big loop. MCS is configured. We're proceeding with hook driving. All right, and they did a quick... Uh, so the, the motion control system onboard station now yeah. back under those control moment gyros, so handed over from the Russian thrusters, and Dragon now given the go to drive those hooks. We have to do that changeover of attitude control before we drive those hooks as the Russian thrusters a little bit... Uh, more dynamic in their control of attitude, and if you had a thruster firing while you were starting to drive those hooks, that could miss a line. So going over to the smoother control moment gyros on the U.S. side, now controlling the attitude on board the station, and those hooks, those 12 hooks on Dragon, about to start driving. Right now, uh, Dragon and ISS attached, uh, just flying off the east coast of, uh, of China. Uh, just underneath Japan. Attached to each other, we uh, we recently passed over to the to orbital night, so we're on the uh, currently the dark side of the world. And actually, uh, we're we're lucky enough to to see soft capture happen just as we were crossing over the Terminator line. And if you're wondering what you're looking at, this is uh, one of the cameras on the very outboard part of the Japanese experiment module, looking back uh, in towards the very front part of node two, where Dragon is currently docked. We are in an orbital nighttime, that's why everything is so dark, but you're looking at Dragon, it's, it is um, horizontal to the ground 
Uh, so the hatch part is uh, right where that green light pretty much is. You can see the nose cone still illuminated above it, and it is currently attached to an international docking adapter on the International Space Station. And inside that capsule are, are Bob Bankand and, and Doug Hurley, uh, first astronauts to fly on a, a privately developed vehicle up to the International Space Station. But test pilots got, got to do some fun tests today. Have a few more steps before they can actually get aboard uh, and ingress to the International Space Station. And that's uh, what we were heard over the, uh, the big loop, that transition which allows us to then uh, proceed with hard capture. And we're seeing the first set of hooks, so the first six out of the 12 are now closed, six more to go. Again, there are 12 of those along the ring. And that helps us uh, ensure that we have uh, an airtight seal. It is vacuum around them right now, so we want to make sure we're we're keeping all of that valuable uh, life support in the vehicle. Now the combined ISS Dragon vehicle. Meanwhile, inside the capsule, Bob and Doug also standing by for this hard capture to complete. And once we have that docking complete call, uh, they'll be able to start stepping through uh, a number of procedures to get them ready to move into the International Space Station. They'll get the, the go-ahead to doff or get out of their suits, and then they'll have some activities on the Dragon side uh, to prepare for the hatch opening. Uh, Chris Cassidy will mainly be working on the station side to pressurize the vestibule. So as Shiv has talked about, the, the space between the, the Dragon capsule and the space station was exposed to vacuum. And even after this tight seal has occurred, we'll still be at vacuum inside. So we'll actually open up a valve to uh, supply air from the station side into that space between the Dragon and station hatchways and they'll get it up to the same ambient pressure that we'll have inside of Dragon uh, and on the station itself. Uh, they'll wait for it to thermally balance out, make sure we don't have any temperature swings as we're bringing it up from vacuum, so probably from a very cold temperature up to about the about 72 degrees that they have uh, in their cabin temperature on board the station, and then we'll get the hatches open. Dragon SpaceX, hard capture complete. Stand by for docking completion. Yeah. And now that uh, hard capture is complete, so that's confirmation of those uh, 12 latches to create that airtight seal. Now that's complete, the umbilicals from the station side will, uh, will interface with the Dragon vehicle umbilicals, and that'll provide power and uh, communications through Space Station directly to Dragon. Uh, pretty much the whole way up, Dragon's been using a combination of batteries and its solar cells pointed at the sun to make sure that it has enough electrical power for the journey up. We're just standing by now for that umbilical to get mated, and that's going to, again, as Shiva was just saying, start the power and data transfer between Dragon and the space station. They've been uh, transmitting data through RF radio frequency uh, on the way uphill, uh, and during the final approach, this will give uh, a hard mate, basically a wired LAN connection between the Dragon spacecraft uh, and the International Space Station itself and then also being able to draw power uh, from the station systems using those great big solar arrays uh, that are used to generate all of the electricity for systems on board the station.
and the soft capture system has been stowed. We see the umbilical starting to deploy about 40% of the way so far, going pretty quickly. Should just take a couple more seconds until we're all the way connected. And then we should be getting that docking complete call out from the core here in Mission Control, SpaceX and Hawthorne standing by. Dragon SpaceX, docking sequence is complete. Dragon, we copy docking complete. To say that it's been a real honor to be just a small part of this uh, nine-year endeavor since the last time the United States spaceship has docked with the International Space Station. We have to congratulate the men and women of SpaceX at Hawthorne, McGregor, and at Kennedy Space Center. Their incredible efforts over the last several years to make this possible cannot go overstated. I'd also like to thank Kathy Leaders and her team of the Commercial Crew Program of NASA. An outstanding job by everyone. Last, I'd like to thank the, the men and women of the National Aeronautics and Space Agency. This is an incredible time to be at NASA. Three new vehicles to be flown, continuing mission in low Earth orbit, and then to the moon and Mars. We thank you again and congratulate you. Dragon arriving. Crew of Expedition 63 is honored to welcome uh, Dragon and the Commercial Crew Program to uh, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Bob and Doug, glad to have you as part of the crew. Well done. Bravo Zulu. Okay, Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Endeavor, this is Houston. Bob and Doug, welcome to the International Space Station after your spectacular rendezvous and docking of the first Crew Dragon vehicle. For the first time since the retirement of the space shuttle, you've completed a historic ride to the ISS and have opened up a new chapter in human space exploration. On behalf of the flight control teams here in Houston and in Hawthorne, California, and to our SpaceX colleagues, bravo on a magnificent moment in spaceflight history and on the start of a new journey that has changed the face of space travel in this new area of space transportation. Bob and Doug, good luck, and we look forward to working with you on board. Dragon SpaceX, Bob and, Doug. Bob and Doug, we here at SpaceX are honored to have been part of ushering in this new era of human spaceflight. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA partnership, congratulations on a phenomenal accomplishment and welcome to the International Space Station. Well, thank you, Anna. We appreciate uh, all the good words and uh, everyone thanking us, but it truly was a magnificent effort by the entire team, the SpaceX team, the NASA team, and a team across America who was able to pull this off and bring human space flight again to our nation. Thanks for everything. Happy to be aboard. And Dragon SpaceX, with that, ground will be enabling hard line power and comm connection shortly. You are go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. We will be configuring your video to go external shortly. And we have one request for Bob's suit doffing when you're ready to copy. We copy all. Go ahead for Bob's suit. During your approach suit leak check, we noticed Bob's suit pass with a lower PSID than his previous vehicle and ONC checks. We still had plenty of margin to support you in a depress, but in order to rule out potential hardware issues, 
When Bob is doffing, after he opens his structural zipper, check all three bladder zipper heads to see if any are partially closed. It is possible that if the head is backed off slightly, that the white tooth is partially visible or a small gap can be seen between the end of the zipper head and the gasket end. Please report observations. Copy. Bob will take a close look at his zippers when he doffs, and he'll get doffing first, so uh, we'll let you know as soon as we see something or if we see something. Great. Thank you so much. Wow. So now uh, Dragon has completed its docking sequence. There's a number of checks. Um, that, that was an absolutely historic moment. Uh, and in spite of that, the, the ground team's getting right back to business, um, talking about the, the soup performance. Just let us know when the uh, interior cameras are secure. On Dragon Dragon. Gotta turn the cameras off first before we can get them out of their suits. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Um, Spacecraft is now docked. Uh, they've got several tasks that they're going to need to be able to do. Um, while we're wait waiting for those tasks to happen, we're actually going to take a short break. But uh, if, in case you, you just missed it, the Dragon spacecraft is now docked to the International Space Station, docked at 7.16 uh, a.m. local time. Yep. Um, Bob and Doug are, are at the space station. Yeah, they're there. It was just under a 19-hour journey from their launch to their docking, so pretty much right on what we were expecting. They got there a little bit early today, which was nice as they were able to get through all those burns. Uh, but, they're, they're, I mean, they're docked. It's it's going to be a little while. They have to do that vestibule pressurization, and then they'll have to do yeah, some leak checks. Dragon on Dragon to ground for um, Bob. I've got both uh, structural zip zippers on my gloves. Uh, lowered and I do see uh, white teeth visible on both sides. It looks like a full white tooth. I'll give you an update once I uh, get to the leg zipper. Copy. White teeth on both sides and we'll await your next status. So the crew right now just going through some checks of their gloves. They're about to get out of their suits. That'll be the first step for the crew on board Dragon. For the crew on board station, Chris Cassidy is going to start getting that vestibule pressurized, and then they're going to do leak checks. So they're going to be actually taking atmosphere from station, putting it into that vestibule, and then once we get all the leak checks done, things are thermally stabilized, it'll be time for hatch opening. We'll be able to see Bob and Doug get into the space station for the first time uh, from on board the Dragon spacecraft. And again, for Doug Hurley, this is the exact port he was at almost nine years ago when he was on the very last space shuttle mission, and now he's commanding the first commercial vehicle to dock with the International Space Station. I think that's going to do it for us in Hawthorne. We're going to give you into the very capable hands of Gary Jordan to take you through the rest of the hatch opening. We're going to be watching from here and following along. We can't wait to see these crew members on board the International Space Station. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. We hope you enjoyed the launch. We hope you enjoyed the ride uphill. We really hope you were with us every single moment from suit up until now, so you've been up for over 24 hours. Uh, but it's been an incredible experience for us to see these guys get on board the International Space Station, to watch Dragon go through the paces, to be lofted into orbit on Falcon 9, something we've been waiting for for years, seeing it come to fruition, I'm still grappling with. Dragon, SpaceX uh, on Dragon really the ground, the video is and no Shiva, it was an honor doing this with you today. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. Um, I, you know, they... Dragon, copy. Thanks, Anna. Can't, can't step on the crew. That's, that's the one rule. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, there are some really great words there from all the flight control teams about how this was a joint partnership between NASA and SpaceX. I think everyone is over the moon here at SpaceX for, for this. Um, Bob and Doug have got to be excited and, and now back, back to business to, to get the vestibule ready to go and then uh, get them on board the station. So again, thank you for following us. Please, um, please continue to watch as Gary takes over for the hatch opening portion and uh, keep following our social media for, for more updates on, on what's happening with uh, Hatch Open. Over to you, Gary. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Dan. What an incredible flight for Bob and Doug lifting off just yesterday and now in space attached to the International Space Station. Some kind words all over after docking at 9.16 a.m. Central and a hard mate uh, just 11 minutes later. 
We're still not done here. We're going to take you through the uh, pressurization sequence and eventually hatch opening of the International Space Station. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground. Cabin mic check com. And I hear you loud and clear on Dragon to Ground. How many? Loud and clear. Excellent. Good com checks. We still have a lot of work to do here. We're going to pressurize the vestibule and eventually get... Uh... And SpaceX Dragon with an update from Bob. It looks like uh, white tooth on the uh, leg zipper as well. We'll take a close look if we can see anything else that might have uh, resulted in that uh, lower leak check pressure. Copy. Really appreciate the report. Thank you. Teams behind me will be configuring the Dragon and the International Space Station to welcome Bob and Doug aboard. Uh, first, of course, the uh, International Space Station Attitude Control, control moment gyros, uh, really holding the uh, Dragon in place through the hard capture sequence. We'll start enabling those thrusters and pressurizing the vestibule. It'll take about an hour uh, until we're able to get the uh, hatch open. The teams here in Mission Control Houston Orbit 2, led by Flight Director Zeb Scoville, will be taking us through that process. Aboard the International Space Station, Commander Chris Cassidy standing by in uh, Node 2. Uh, right in front of that is the pressurized mating adapter. He uh, recently opened up the hatch to introduce some of the station air and mix it, uh, get a nice mix in there, uh, avoiding some CO2 pockets. That hatch you see just beyond Chris Cassidy there is normally closed. Uh, he was able to open it a little bit earlier today, mix some of that cabin air, and uh, get rid of those CO2 pockets, make sure it's all clean and ready uh, for Bob and Doug. He closed it shortly after just to make sure no FOD or uh, foreign objects, anything were to float in there that would uh, inhibit uh, any hatch opening process today one of the pro one of the uh, next milestones for Chris Cassidy will be to open up that hatch he's got some cameras you see placed uh, within that node we'll get some good views of the hatch opening and welcoming Bob and Doug here in uh, just about an hour A big moment in history today, May 31st, 2020. Just on the other side of that hatch, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley have successfully arrived at the International Space Station. Still a couple of milestones to get through. Before we can open up that hatch, it's going to take some time. First, pressurizing the vestibule in between the station and Dragon. We'll bring that up to pressure. It's going to take some time for that uh, pressure to stabilize. Of course, the, the uh, temperature uh, within that vestibule uh, causes a little bit of swing, so we'll just wait for that to pressurize or to stabilize before opening up that hatch. Here at Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Zeb Scoville welcoming the director of the NASA Johnson Space Center, Mark Geyer. We'll have a few other uh, VIPs here in the room uh, to welcome Bob and Doug once they get through that hatch. Now again, this uh, repressurization and hatch opening process is going to take some time. You see now we're uh, going to have some intermittent losses with the communication from the International Space Station. You're seeing now the International Space Station Flight Control Room, led by Flight Director Zeb Scoville. Just a handover of some of those audio and visual communications. We'll be regaining those uh, shortly. Might lose them intermittently throughout uh, the repressurization process, but the teams here will be monitoring uh, all of the procedures 
again, pressurizing that vestibule and eventually getting to that hatch opening. From right to left there, seated, you see Flight Director Zeb Scoville. It was he who was leading the teams for both the launch of Bob and Doug over at the Cape. He was leading the teams here in Mission Control Houston. You just saw uh, the Johnson Space Center Director Mark Geyer walk off to the side. Seated next to Zeb Scoville, Joshua Kutrick. He is uh, one of the members of the most recent class of astronauts, the class of 2017. Canadian Space Agency astronaut uh, went through candidate training and officially became uh, an astronaut just recently. Again, a few milestones uh, to get to, through to that hatch opening. First, the International Space Station attitude control has been successfully switched uh, from control moment gyro only control, uh, enabling some of the thrusters on the International Space Station. We also just received word that Dragon is uh, successfully receiving power. Ground ISS power connection has been established. And there you have it. Uh, Dragon is successfully receiving power from the International Space Station. And Dragon copies on Dragon to ground that uh, power has been established. Just uh, let us know when we should make a uh, hard line comm check. We will, Co. Thank you. For those of you just joining us, you are getting a live look at uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, commander of the International Space Station, doing some of the prep work uh, to open up the hatch and get ready uh, to welcome Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station. They launched successfully yesterday at 2.22 uh, p.m. Central Time, 3.22 p.m. Eastern, and uh, docked successfully with a contact and capture just a little bit ago at uh, 9.16 a.m. Central Time, 10.16 Eastern.
Now, some of the milestones uh, to get that hatch open have already taken place. First, uh, attitude control. Uh, for some of the docking sequence, for uh, the initial contact and capture, attitude control was on Russian thrusters. Um, that was moved to control moment gyros for uh, hard mate, making sure that everything lined up and we got those ready-to-hook indicators green before driving those hooks. Uh, the attitude control has since been switched uh, to enable some thrusters on the International Space Station. We did get confirmation of good power uh, being delivered from ISS to the internet to the uh, Dragon. Next will be to test some hard line communication between Dragon and the International Space Station. Dragon and station, Dragon and station, it's Houston calling on the big loop. We're prepared and getting ready to transition the comm system to hardline, at which time we're going to do a couple comm checks. We just want to make sure everybody's on board with that uh, and aware. So, Dragon, first, maybe let me know if you hear this and if you're good with that plan. Uh, Houston, uh, Endeavor on the big loop, we had you loud and clear. Houston Station copies and concurs. Okay, Endeavor and Station, we have you loud and clear on RF right now. We are putting it in work now, so transitioning comm system to hardline, and we'll call you back for voice checks momentarily. Endeavor copies. This is Mission Control Houston. The voice you just heard was Capcom Joshua Kutrick from here in Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're laying through the big loop that's integrated communications with Dragon and the International Space Station, just taking us through those procedures until we get to hatch opening. Now there's an umbilical connection with Dragon, connecting Dragon to the International Space Station. We did get good confirmation that power is flowing uh, from the International Space Station to Dragon. Next, we'll be proceeding with some of the communications checks. The big loop uh, established on the C2V2, common communications for visiting vehicle through uh, some of the last legs of the rendezvous and docking of Dragon uh, to the International Space Station. We'll switch that over to hardline communications, testing that out here shortly.
We're going to get some good views of station today. You see Chris Cassidy working inside No. 2. Just on the other side is the hatch. That hatch is separating uh, between the International Space Station and the pressurized mating uh, uh, adapter. One more hatch to go after that. That hatch uh, opens up... uh, to uh, the Dragon Hatch with Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley on the other side. Just surrounding Chris Cassidy from this view, you can see a series of cameras. We're going to get some great views uh, from Node 2 there on the left, a couple of high-definition cameras. On the right, a 360 VR camera. Part of an initiative to uh, engage viewers and provide views that from the International Space Station that have never been seen before. We'll get to see uh, some of those 360-degree views later after they're configured and stitched on the ground, now being recorded during this historic moment today, May 31st, 2020. Affirmative, we are on the same page. Those steps in the execution note are all that's needed. It worked. You're getting a live look at Chris Cassidy aboard the International Space Station. Just in front of him is that 360-degree camera. He's got cameras situated all over Node 2, pointing right towards that hatch. On the other side, we'll be welcoming Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley uh, after pressurization of the vestibule. And uh, we'll start beginning uh, hatch opening after that. Yeah, we copy and pip open, Chris. Another handover of uh, communication from the tracking and data relay satellites providing video and audio communication from the International Space Station, now integrated uh, with the Dragon, uh, Dragon Power. Still looking towards some of those hard line communication checks. Again, we'll lose uh, communication intermittently as the International Space Station flies 269 statute miles. Station Houston 2 for Chris, we're go for open on the Node 2 forward hatch.
regaining some of that uh, video from International Space Station. Chris Cassidy given the go to open that Node 2 forward hatch. Again, he opened it a little bit earlier today uh, to allow some of the station air to mix into the pressurized mating adapter. There it is. Now again, it's there's a few more hatches uh, to open until we uh, are able to welcome Bob and Doug aboard the International Space Station. You're looking through the hatch into the pressurized mating adapter. Uh, there's another hatch down there uh, through the pressurized mating adapter uh, that opens up to the International Docking Adapter. Houston, three. Hey, Josh. The uh, no, there was zero. Uh, Zero on DPDT and the no two forward hatch is open. And Chris, we copy no two forward hatch open. Uh, we concur your go for the next yellow activity. That's your 1515 activity. It's step two in 2.102 two crew dragon ISS arrival through hatch opening. Basically, you're going to cycle the eight pass equalization valve. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground, if desired, reference procedure four, decimal four zero zero to monitor vestibule pressurization. And copies for small. Next Dragon on Dragon to Ground for 4.012. We've uh, completed uh, up to Section 5, and we've got a timer started for one hour. Bobby completed through Section 5, and your suits are drying. 
and you have started a timer for one hour with that. Do we have your permission to come back on board? Give you, uh, get you back on board. We copy, we are go to come back on board. And with that, you are go to perform sections one through three of 4.400. We do recommend deferring your step 2.1 for the waste system flush until closer to hatch opening. In section three, as you are performing your inventory, please collect all your food and water bottle trash and consolidate it into the two trash bags within their common bags in location 18. You will transfer the plastic bags containing this trash to ISS for disposal during a scheduled activity after ISS ingress. And do note that you are welcome to defer this inventory until after you eat your meal that is scheduled for right about now. Okay, Anna, um, if you could uh, give us five minutes before you guys uh, come back on board, uh, we do have some clothing config to uh, complete. Understand we've got to go for sections one, two, and three of 4.400, and we will consolidate our trash um, into the bags provided in location uh, 18, and we'll defer the docked waste configuration section two of 4.400 until it gets closer to hatch opening. Station, we copy 1507. We and copy and we will wait five minutes before coming on board and we'll uh, check with you with before we do so if we don't hear from you first. Copy, ready. Thanks, Anna. This is Mission Control Houston. You're listening to crews on board the International Space Station and Dragon prepare for opening the hatch. You're seeing Chris Cassidy aboard the International Space Station already open the hatch to the pressurized mating adapter just below that hatchway you see at the center of the screen here. On the other side of the hatch is the hatchway uh, to the International Docking Adapter. On the other side of that, the uh, recently docked Crew Dragon. Vestibule pressurization is underway. This will equalize the pressure between Dragon and the International Space Station. Once it does come up to pressurization, it will take some time to equalize that pressure. Uh, because of the temperature difference in the uh, vestibule, just take some time to stabilize. Dragon Endeavor, it's Houston uh, calling you on hard line now for a voice check. How do you read?
Endeavor, it's Houston calling. Space to ground two via hard line now for a voice check. Do you read? Houston calling. Endeavor is a voice check. How do we do this? Counting. One, two, one. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, five. And Station Houston on two, Anatoly, we hear you loud and clear. Um, we're going to swap a couple minor things here and try Dragon again. We're just still trying to get calm with Dragon. Stand by one. Dragon again. Dragon is there. We'll check how we do this. Counting one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. Dragon is And Station Houston on two. Everybody, uh, we'll just stand by for a few minutes. We're going to try to raise Dragon by another means. Stand by. And Endeavor, it's Houston calling on Dragon to ground one. We're trying to reach you via hard line. Just not sure if you're if you're receiving it or not. Uh, let us know at your convenience. And Houston from uh, Endeavor, uh, we're hearing quite a bit of echo on the other loop that appears to be connected. Um, it's unintelligible, uh, but we do have you loud and clear on the Dragon to Ground. And Endeavor, Houston on Dragon to Ground, thanks for that. Very helpful. Uh, we'll take a look, and we have you loud and clear on Dragon to Ground as well. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to work it and try to give you a call back in the next few minutes on Hardline. Never copy, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston working through the steps to pressurize the vestibule. We did have confirmation that vestibule pressurization was underway. We do have power flowing from the International Space Station to Dragon after it docked uh, for a contact and capture at 9.16 a.m. Central Time, 10.16 a.m. Eastern, just earlier this morning. A few other uh, milestones to reach. We need a good uh, audio communication hard-lined uh, through the umbilical uh, where Dragon is currently docked on the other side of that hatch, uh, providing now power, uh, just making sure those hard-lined communications are intact. Working through that uh, as we count down towards the milestones of opening that hatch. Dragon on Dragon to Ground. Go ahead. Yeah, Anna, in uh, Section 1 of 4.400, 
the tablet state of charge are 66 for Doug's and 32 for mine. Copy, 66 six for Doug, 32 for Bob. And do we have your permission to come back on board with video now? Yeah, go ahead and uh, come on board. We just may have to take it down uh, at some point, as you might imagine, but uh, come on board. Sounds great. Thanks. Station Houston on three for Chris. Your convenience, but just an update on the comm status. Yes, sir, go ahead. Chris, you've probably been able to tell we've run into uh, some minor issues trying to get Hardline established, so we're working that here, and we're going to be reattempting the comm checks as soon as we think we're go. I'll give you a heads up on that. Um, and then regarding stuff, uh, just get aheads. Uh, I was going to pass along to do the teardown um, from steps three and four in the approach monitoring, but I just saw it go gray, so have you done that already? Uh Hold on just one second. Which one was that? Maybe I fat fingered the wrong procedure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's subtle. So it's in the execution note for um, Dragon approach monitoring as we were monitoring Dragon uh, earlier in the day. And down in the execution note are the teardown steps. I'm here in the cupola right now. I'll take care of it. it it's not great, but in momentarily will be. Sounds good, uh, and I'm also hearing on that that we have done on the ground steps one through four, so it's just five and six left for you in that teardown procedure. Copy that. Shot three, uh, steps five and six are complete in the teardown. Copy, Chris. Thanks for that. And uh, just about to hit the button and reattempt the hardline checks with Dragon. Okay, copy. Endeavor, Endeavor, it's Houston calling via hardline. Voice check, how do you read? And station standby Endeavor. This is a call for Endeavor via hardline voice check. How do you read? Houston Endeavor, uh, completely unreadable. It's uh, skipping pretty badly. And Endeavor, it's Houston on Dragon to Ground. We heard your reply loud and clear. Understand we're still broken. We're working it. Thanks for the patience. We got you, Josh. That's uh, exactly the case. Thanks. Um, Dragon FM, voice 
check how to read me. Counting one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. And station on two for Anatoly. Anatoly, we're hearing you loud and clear in Houston. We seem to have an issue still with COM2 Dragon, so we'll just have you stand by. We'll let you know when we're ready to retry. Thanks for your patience. Okay, call me on Mr. Brown, John, please. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to ground for a timeline tag up. Go ahead. Yeah, Anna, we're uh, managing the uh, collection of the used water bottles and other items as well as our meal and uh, just uh, looking to understand a little bit better how close we were to a hatch opening or another timeline milestone. We're kind of running to the end of the tablet here with a meal five that started about, uh, I don't know, 25 minutes ago or so. And so I uh, just wanting to understand how much time we've got in front of us. In Dragon SpaceX, we estimate we are about an hour 
to Dragon Hatch opening. Copy that, Anna. Thanks for uh, those words. It just helps us uh, manage getting things done. And it uh, looks like you guys are on board. Uh, welcome aboard, uh, I guess, the integrated uh, space station now, huh? Indeed. Thank you so much. We're excited to be here. Endeavor, Houston calling over hardline for a voice check. How do you read us now? Houston or station from Endeavor. Um, I'm not sure of the location of that last call, but uh, still quite a bit of uh, skipping and unreadable. And Endeavor, it's Houston loud and clear on Dragon to Ground. Um, we heard your response, so we're in the same situation. We're hearing you, you're not hearing us. Uh, we have one more troubleshooting item that we're gonna put in work now. Uh, so we'll give that a try and then uh, maybe call it for the day. We'll let you know. Endeavor copies, thanks Houston. Endeavor, Endeavor, Houston calling by Hardline for a final voice check. Do you have us now? Houston, Dragon on the big loop, that was uh, an improvement, but it's still uh, completely unreadable.
and Endeavor Houston on Dragon to Ground One. We were still hearing you five by five. Understand it was slightly improved. Uh, were you able to read me at all, or is it is it unuseful? Yeah, it was a, a slight improvement, uh, but it's still unintelligible. Almost uh, every word. It, there was maybe one word that you could have sort of figured out, but that was about it. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Uh, first time, obviously, and we think we're running into some interference issues, but we'll continue to take a look. We copy, thanks.
This is Mission Control Houston. If you're tuning in to our coverage, you're getting a live look at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. You're hearing a lot of communications from the International Space Station, both uh, from the space station side over space to ground. Uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, International Space Station Commander, um, uh, setting up for the hatch opening. You can see a series of cameras scattered around, uh, ready to capture the best views of Bob and Doug coming through that hatch. We did get confirmation just shortly uh, that we did have uh, good uh, pressurization of the vestibule. It'll be about 10 minutes uh, to perform a series of leak checks. Again, that uh, pressure needs to stabilize. The thermal conditions uh, make it swing just a little bit, so just waiting for that to stabilize before those leak checks are finalized. Uh, that underway uh, within the next 10 minutes. We do have uh, communications uh, uh, settled uh, in the hardline connection between International Space Station and Dragon. You can see from the inside of Dragon now, the crew uh, doffed or took off their suits, uh, just getting a few things packed up before they eventually open up the hatch after that uh, pressurization is equalized between Space Station and Dragon. Endeavor, it's Houston calling for a voice check over the big loop. We've retransitioned back to RF, so back to uh, RF. How do you hear us? Houston Dragon on the Houston Dragon on the big loop. Uh, was that a comm check for us? Yeah, a affirmative uh, endeavor. It's Houston. We transitioned back to RF uh, because we still had the interference of our hardline. So we're back on RF now and just want to make sure we had you. We've got you loud and clear on RF. Loud and clear as well. We're just going to leave it here for now. Thank you. Here's a live look from inside the crew Dragon. You're seeing Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley uh, just preparing the inside of Dragon. They have doffed or taken off their suits. The pressurization between Space Station and Dragon is complete. Uh, they just need to perform some leak checks, make sure that uh, pressure is stable before they actually open the hatch. Teams working together on the ground, International Space Station Flight Control Room and the Flight Control Room in Hawthorne to get that big loop communication uh, configured so everyone can hear each other through this process, figure it out a workaround uh, using RF connection.
This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're getting a look inside the Crew Dragon. That was Bob Bankhead seated uh, on the right side, the pilot seat or the Joint Operations Mission Commander seat for uh, Demo 2. He and uh, Doug Hurley, the commander of the spacecraft, just preparing the uh, uh, inside, putting away some trash. They just doffed their suits and right now just waiting. Uh, for the uh, pressure to equalize between the International Space Station and uh, Bob and Doug. Just two hatches, really, separating them from the inside of the orbiting complex. Aboard International Space Station, Commander Chris Cassidy has been outfitting uh, Node 2. It's the first node. Uh, once you cross over some of the hatchways, there it is. You can see some of the cameras positioned uh, around to capture uh, the crew coming in to the International Space Station. Much of that work completed at this point. Really at this point just waiting for good leak checks uh, between uh, Station and Dragon. Huntsville Space Ground 3 for Chris and the ISS experience. Head on 3. Chris, we're uh, not seeing good connection between the SSC-25 and the camera. Uh, we're coming up on a handover, but we're looking for a reboot of SSC-25. Reboot 25, copy. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground for inventory. I am here and ready to copy. Okay, Anna, we'll start with uh, location nine from bag 203. We remove three water bottles. Copy, three bottles removed from bag 203. Good read back from location 10. We removed Bottles from each of bag 207, 208, so six water bottles in total. And Dragon SpaceX, you were pretty broken on that call, but I think I copied three bottles from each bag 207 and 208. Is that correct? That is a good readback, Anna. I copy. Okay. For location 11, one dinner from bag 317, one breakfast from bag 315, and one lunch from bag 316. Yeah, uh, there are several. Um, I copy one dinner from 317, uh, one breakfast from 315, and one lunch from 316. But, uh, they're all, everything I, that was taken has been sent down. That's a good read back. And location 12, 
one dinner from bag three, two, one, one breakfast from bag three, one, nine, and one lunch from bag three, two, zero. I copy one dinner from 321, one breakfast from 319, one lunch from 310. And I, am I correct to conclude all of this includes your consumption from the lunch that you just completed? That's uh, correct, Anna. We've uh, finished eating, and the lunch we just completed uh, is a good uh, complete list of, of, of what I've read down to you so far. Um, the only thing we have remaining is the uh, flush of the waste uh, system here, and uh, we'll do that with a water bottle and report uh, when we do that uh, a little bit later. Copy. That sounds like a perfect plan. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, that's the extent of our inventory. All else is per the packing plan. Copy all else from per the packing plan. This is Mission Control Houston. You've seen Chris Cassidy, International Space Station Commander, do much of the setup, but he does have two crew members on board, both Russian cosmonauts. Next to him right now is Ivan Wagner, a rookie space flyer that was uh, on the same Soyuz spacecraft that uh, Chris Cassidy launched on from the Baikonur Cosmodrome just a little more than a month ago. Also on board is uh, Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin.
This is Mission Control Houston. We are coming up on almost two hours since uh, the Crew Dragon made contact and was captured by the uh, at the International Space Station's forward uh, international docking adapter. That happened at 9.16 a.m. Central, 10.16 a.m. Eastern. Still working through some of those milestones, uh, equalizing the pressure between uh, Dragon and International Space Station, verifying some of the communications, and of course you see uh, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley inside, continuing to prepare the inside of their vessel uh, before they make their way inside uh, the orbiting complex. SpaceX Dragon on uh, Dragon to ground. Uh, mind taking the cameras down for just a few minutes here? We will put that in work and let you know when it's done. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you heard the call from Bob Bankin, Joint Operations Mission Commander of uh, the Demo 2 mission, taking down some of those video fees. We're still waiting uh, for some of those milestones to pass before actually opening the hatch. The Dragon crew continuing to uh, get themselves ready before opening the hatch. Chris Cassidy on the other side, just preparing uh, some of the camera views, making sure everything's set there, done even a little bit ahead of time. We do have confirmation that there is a good data connection path between uh, Dragon and the International Space Station. Some of those checks underway next. Coming up on uh, two hours since docking at 9.16 a.m. Central, 10.16 a.m. Eastern. Space Station on three. Uh the SSC has been rebooted. Any success? Hey, Chris, we see good connection between the SSC and the camera, and we're just performing the calibration now. We'll start recording shortly. Thanks for your help. Yeah, no problem. Happy to help. Dragon SpaceX, we have gone exterior with the cameras. Happy, thanks.
This is Mission Control Houston. Again, you're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station. That's uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, commander of Expedition 63. Continuing to get some of those uh, cameras configured for hatch opening. Many milestones already passed uh, after docking at 9.16 a.m. Central, uh, almost two hours ago at this point. At the time of docking, uh, the International Space Station was on uh, Russian thrusters. At the, after contact and capture, was moved over to control moment gyro, uh, stabilization and attitude control, now back to its standard configuration of thrusters and uh, control moment gyros. After an umbilical connecting uh, Dragon to the International Space Station was established, we did get confirmation of good power uh, flowing from the International Space Station to Dragon. Dragon now relying on station power. We did get confirmation of, uh, of good uh, data transmission. And of course, uh, the teams here on the ground, both here in Houston and in Hawthorne, troubleshooting some of the communication to make sure that is ready to go prior to hatch opening. Pressurization uh, between International Space Station and Dragon brought up to uh, the same pressure, 14.7, the same we would uh, find here on Earth. Leak checks are next to uh, confirm the, con the uh, pressure sta is stabilized between the two vehicles. You see the hatch uh, just on the other side of Chris Cassidy there. That's the hatch to the pressurized mating adapter. There's two more hatches. Uh, once you go down that hatchway, one is to the international docking adapter, and the other is the hatch of Dragon itself.
SpaceX Dragon uh, with a couple of questions. I am here and ready to copy. Hey, Anna. Um, we show about an hour and 11 minutes since we started drying the suits, just to let you know that. And then the uh, other thing is we can put 4.400 uh, Section 2 in work if you think we have some time before uh, we get the hatch open. We copy. You are go to... Stop drying your suits and turn off that suit fan at this time. Let me get you words on that waste system plush. Uh, we'll shut the uh, suit fan off now. In Dragon SpaceX, we are about a half hour prior to hatch open, so you are go to do that waste system flush if that sounds good to you at this time. Okay, we may give it a few minutes. If it's going to be uh, 30 minutes until hatch opening, we may want to use it just one more time. Uh, so, yeah, we may hold off for another 10 minutes or so. But uh, let us know if anything changes. Otherwise, we'll do it then. Totally reasonable. Sounds like a good plan. Thanks. And Dragon Houston on Dragon 2 Ground, we're still working comm issues. We're going to take down the big loop now. Uh, we'll maintain you on Dragon to Ground. We'll call you when we have hard line back. Stand by one second. Chris. Dragon copies, Houston. Thanks. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, we're stuck into Dragon. Yeah, no problem. Uh, hey, I'm just looking ahead at, that, at the uh, PAO event, and I know it says... Uh, this uh, video of, uh, through the Note, Note 2 and Space to Ground 2 up and down, it would only take me about uh, one minute to change back over to the encoder and go do uh, calm the normal way that we do PAO events if, if that's something that's preferred. It, it really is super fast, and I can go get you that way in that config real quick if you need it. Later. Copy, Chris. Yeah, copy. Uh, thanks for that. We'll offer it up, and I'll let you know if we have want to want to go that way. Copy. Obviously not urgent or important. Just throwing it out there. Station Houston on three for Chris Com config. Go ahead. We just wanted to clarify from your last comments. Uh, we show it as being in the standard config, whereby you're going to be coming down over the camcorder HD mic, and we'll be going up over uh, Space to Ground two, and that's what we're intending. Did you maybe just? We might have missed your intent in your previous remarks. Is that what you had in mind? Oh, I had, uh, like we do all other PAO events, we talk, um, we hold the handheld microphone that is going uh, through the clip-on mic transmitter to the clip-on, to the, to the, uh, through the camera, and then the audio comes down through the encoder. Um, that's how we typically do a uh, PAO events. So I could go back to that config if you need, super fast, or if you want to do it this way where, where we're talking on space to ground too, that's fine too, I don't care. 
Just throwing it out there because it's a different heli than we normally do PAO events. And just to be clear, well, the configuring now is the Node 2 camera is not connected to the encoder, as, as you probably know. So, so I w all I would do is just plug the cable back into the encoder and switch back over to the nominal Node 2 camcorder. Chris, that, that is clear. Um, the camera needs to be plugged into the encoder. Uh, so it, what you're saying is what we need. We don't know where it, where it got swapped up, but the camera should definitely be plugged into the encoder and audio is coming down via that encoder. Okay, so yeah. We'll just use it on the, I guess what I was thinking is going back to one without a battery and not be dependent on the battery and going back over to the nominal cable, which includes power. Uh, I just get a little leery about what we're relying on these batteries. Gabby, we have uh, Photo TV online, so we're talking to them on the phone right now, Send by one. Station used on three for Chris. Um, microphone and the free float camera both connected to the encoder. Does that clear it up? Okay, yeah, copy all. You want the free float camera, and we'll use the handheld microphone through the ATU. Copy all. No, no problem. I think we're just. We're t uh, I'm not communicating. <laughs> no pun intended. But I think we're in a good config now, and we won't. I won't swap over to the uh, to the nominal Note 2 camera. Down by Chris. Station you saw through Chris. If uh, you're still there, we think we're we still have it backwards. So, so I, I see you look. Yeah, I see you in the video now. So um, we still have PAO on the line. Uh, sorry for the confusion, but um, I think that this much is clear. This morning, 
um, we moved cameras, uh, that we swapped the cameras that were connected to the encoder. What we want now, we're getting video from the free float camera through the encoder, so that's good. We're seeing it right now. Uh, what we need, just relaying here, is your lapel mic, that has to go through that new free float camera uh, so that your mic runs, connects to the free float camera, and then that audio comes down through the encoder. Does that make sense? That's how that's the config. It's in right now, and that's all perfect. The uh, the only benefit, I guess, I, I didn't initially make it clear, is is if I switch back to the normal cable and the normal camera, we're not dependent on a uh, battery power on the camera. I just am worried that throughout this whole event, we're gonna uh, that all of a sudden the battery's gonna go out. I go back to the normal. SpaceX Dragon on uh, Dragon to Ground. Now report complete with 4.012. The benefit to this free flow camera I'll be is complete I can with take four decimal zero one two. And get all the way into the Dragon, which I didn't, don't think we could do with the other cable. So what I, my, my thought was after we do all of the ingress stuff and we switch gears to the PAO ceremony where we're standing right in front of the hatch, we could have. Uh, actual power to the camera, but it's really no big deal. What I'll do is I'll just, uh, I have got a couple batteries on standby, and I'll just make sure there's a fresh battery right before we start that PAO link. Okay, Chris, uh, sorry it took so long, but I'm 100% uh, with you, and uh, copy 100% on, on the battery concern. The word we're getting here is we would like to run it in the config that it's in right now. Now, we copy all on the battery config. Great idea to have a few spares nearby, um, but we think uh, it's going to last throughout the whole event. Okay, copy all. And Station Houston on three for Chris. Uh, with that out of the way, you have a go when able for your 1615 activity. 1615, that's your go for steps three and four in 2.102 Crew Dragon ISS arrival. Okay, uh, 1615 activity inward. Endeavor, Houston calling on hardline for a voice check. Endeavor, Houston calling via hard line for a voice check. Loud and clear, how was? Hey, uh, Endeavor, Houston, we have you loud and clear on hard line. Great news. Well, congrats. Uh, sounds like we got it uh, at least somewhat sorted out. Affirmative, concur. We think uh, we might have found it interference between C2V2 and the hardline system, but we're going to keep it here uh, for now and proceed down the timeline. Never copies. Houston, I'm three. Hey, can you back me up on the DPDT? Well, do we're checking.
Station Houston on two, uh, Chris, TPDT is good. You're going to continue. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at the inside of the International Space Station. What you were hearing before were just some of the uh, audio and video checks, just making sure that everything's synced up so that we get the best views and the best audio possible for when Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley come through that hatch. We're working towards the hatch opening now. You can see uh, Chris Cassidy down the pressurized mating adapter. That hatch uh, will open up to the international docking adapter. On the other side is the Dragon hatch. Cassidy working through those procedures uh, after pressure equalization was complete. Uh, now expecting uh, around the order of 10 to 15 minutes, maybe, until we uh, finally get that hatch open. So we'll stand by, keep those views uh, coming from the inside of the International Space Station to welcome Bob and Doug aboard. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at the uh, live view of the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The team here, Orbit 2 team led by Flight Director Scoville, is working through the intricate process of making sure everything is ready to open the hatch and welcome Bob Bacon and Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station. 
It's been a journey so far to get to this point. More than two hours ago, made contact and capture with the International Space Station was the Dragon vehicle, the Crew Dragon vehicle, with uh, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley aboard, 9.16 a.m. Central, 10.16 a.m. Eastern. Dragon uh, FM, voice check. How do you hit me? Counter, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five. Here and then give you go to come back on board. In Dragon SpaceX, you were pretty broken in that previous call. Here's some stations with the ground too. I don't hear Dragon. I think you're being summoned by the Russian crew. And Dragon SpaceX, I was told to proceed with you. Can you please repeat your last? Yeah, Anna, just uh, wanted to double check with you to uh, make sure you had uh, copied our last and that we were still good on that uh, estimated timer that you gave us for 30 minutes. It looks like we've got about 10 minutes less. If so we'd like to pick up in section two of 4.400. Checking. This is Michigan Drill Houston. Chris Cassidy opens the hatch to the International Docking Adapter, 11.37 a.m. Central Time, Station and Dragon flying. Uh, together, 267 statute miles over the South Pacific. This is a view from the camera at the forward end of Dragon. 20 minutes until Dragon hatch opened and the APAS hatch was just opened. Again, 11.37 a.m. Central, the uh, hatch to the international docking that there was open. You see Chris Cassidy there poking his head in. That's the camera at the forward end of the Dragon. Now only one hatch separating Bob Bank and Doug Hurley from Chris Cassidy, who you're seeing here from those Dragon views. Expected time to open that hatch is about 20 minutes from now. We'll report that time to you and expect to do a welcome ceremony at 12.15 a.m. Central Time, 1.15 p.m. Eastern. That'll welcome uh, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station as part of the Expedition 63 crew. We'll get to hear some words from them and have some VIPs here in Mission Control Houston to provide words to the teams uh, that oversaw the entire mission and the crew aboard the International Space Station. Station Houston, we copy the hot choke and no condensation, thanks. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground, com check. Dragon to Ground, how us? A little choppy, how me? You are loud and clear. We'll put section two of four decimal 400 in work. We copy all. Thank you. And please give Anatoly a call on Big Loop. Okay. We'll call Anatoly on the Big Loop. And I'd also like to report uh, two bottles of water consumed from location 9, bag 204. Location 9, bag 204, and to confirm that was for the waste system flush.
One for the waste system. Chris Cassidy, for moving that um, removing that target from the uh, A pass hatch docking interface. Dragon, Tom check on the big loop for Anatoly from Endeavor. Dragon FM voice check, how do we play? Counting, one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. Anatoly, uh, Endeavor has you loud and clear. How copy? Copy system, they have you loud and clear. Good to hear your voice. Dragon how do you read me? Loud and clear. Okay. So this one, turn the electric system. And all players from Houston, that completes the comm checks. Thank you. Have it. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston. Those comm checks within the International Space Station between the Dragon crew, Chris Cassidy, and on the other side of the uh, International Space Station, the Russian segment, Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin, completing those uh, voice checks. You can see Cassidy uh, continuing to outfit the hatch, just clearing the space and uh, providing some padding and removing that uh, docking target from the APAS hatch. Dragon, go ahead and drag into ground. So I copy that the waste system flush is in work, and two more bags were consumed from location nine, bag 204, and that includes the water used for the waste system flush. Is that all correct? From bag 204, one of which Bob is in the process of consuming, and the other will be for the waste flush. That is uh, correct. Perfect, thanks for clarifying. And secondly, do we have your permission to come back on board with video? Negative, uh, we're gonna need about two minutes. We're just wrapping up ops here right now. Happy, two more minutes. We will await your confirmation. Thank you. Still getting views from the uh, infrared camera that's located right at the center of the Dragon hatch, looking at uh, Chris Cassidy, International Space Station Commander, outfitting that hatch, getting ready uh, for Bob and Doug to arrive. You're hearing uh, communications over Dragon to ground. That was uh, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley on the other side of that hatch, inside the crew tra Dragon vehicle, finishing up uh, their operations on the inside uh, for that hatch opening, expected in about 10 to 15 minutes. Again, uh, it's been a process to get to this point uh, just about two and a half hours ago. Docking to the International Space Station was uh, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley aboard the uh, first uh, American, commercial American vehicle to dock uh, to the International Space Station with crew aboard. Again, we're expecting about 10 to 15 minutes uh, to open up that hatch 
One more hatch uh, separating Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley from the inside of the International Space Station, still uh, looking at Cassidy doing some of the prep work for that hatch. We'll get some great views that Cassidy set up uh, uh, over the past few hours to capture this uh, historic moment today. Be sure to stay tuned in at 12.15 p.m. Central Time, 1.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll start a welcome ceremony, officially welcome, welcoming Bob Bengen and Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station to join the Expedition 63 crew. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground. Go ahead. Anna, you're clear to come on board. Poppy, clear to come on board, and thanks for your patience with the comm. We are in an orientation that's creating some blockage to receive your comm on Dragon to Ground. Yeah, we figured that was it. Uh, no problem. That's part of the deal. Chris Cassidy giving a wave, eagerly await, awaiting uh, Bob and Doug to come aboard. Just behind him, you see Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner, Russian cosmonauts of, of uh, Expedition 63, standing by. We'll be able to come aboard Dragon here in a sec, get some views from the uh, crew Dragon. We're in a short handover of uh, those uh, communications from the International Space Station, video and audio. Should be regaining them uh, momentarily. Anatoly Ivanishin in the foreground there. Chris Cassidy continuing the prep work for opening up the hatch there. Again, uh, the pressurized mating adapter hatch you see there in the foreground is open. The A-pass hatch to the uh, international docking adapter is open. Just one more, and that's the hatch of Dragon, the Crew Dragon vehicle. Station, uh, space to ground two, station is ready for Dragon hatch equalization. Station Houston copies Dragon call ready when you're when you're able.
Houston Dragon, go ahead. And Dragon, Houston, uh, just looking to confirm that you're ready for hatch equalization. We are ready as long as uh, SpaceX is ready. Okay, uh, station and Endeavour, stand by for equalization. We're putting it in work. Expected equalization time, four minutes. Station copies. Endeavour copies. This is Mission Control Houston. We're continuing to equalize the pressure of that last hatch. Behind that hatch is Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft. We are moments away from opening the hatch and welcoming, welcoming them aboard the International Space Station.
This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just tuning in, we are standing by for confirmation of the hatch opening between the International Space Station and the Crew Dragon. There's the hatch to the Crew Dragon. Seeing Doug Hurley through the glass on the other side. And there's Bob Benkin. Still equalizing that pressure between Crew Dragon and International Space Station just moments away. Dragon SpaceX on Big Loop. You are go for hatch opening per the decal, followed by the remaining actions in your procedure 4.400. Dragon copies go for hatch opening and uh, remaining steps in 4.400.
And with that, the hatch is open 12.02 p.m. Central Time, 1.02 p.m. Eastern. Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley open the hatch to the International Space Station after launching from American soil on a U.S. vehicle for the first time in nine years, the first time ever for a commercially built spacecraft. If you're just tuning in, the hatches are open between Dragon and the International Space Station. International Space Station Commander Chris Cassidy now talking with uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft. That hatch open at 12.02 p.m. Central, 1.02 p.m. Eastern. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop. The hatch is open in 5.54.400. How copy? I copy. Hatch is open. Great to hear. Thanks. And SpaceX Dragon in 5.9, we're going to exit out of 4.400 and transition to 2.102, Crew Dragon ISS arrival through the hatch opening. I copy with that. I understand you are complete with 4.400 and we'll follow along with you as you transition to the ISS procedure. This is Mission Control Houston. The crew of Demo 2 just performing a few closeout duties. The hatches are open. They were open 12.02 p.m. Central Time. We're moments away from the Dragon crew aboard Demo 2 to, to enter the International Space Station. It'll be the first time that Americans will enter the International Space Station on a rocket launched from U.S. soil, built by an American company, the first time ever Americans will enter from a commercially built spacecraft.
Houston on Space Year on two for Chris. Uh, when you're able, we're just looking for a quick voice check on the mic. Station Space Front 2, go ahead. Chris, we were hoping we could voice check the mic just before starting the PAO event. Okay, copy that. Houston Dragon on the big loop in six point step six point one of two decimal one zero two IMB duct installation is complete. Go for IMB pan activation. Houston copies go for IMB fan activation, that's in work. If you're just tuning in, you're getting a live look. Station Houston on two, uh, two things. Chris, we did hear you over the PAO side of things. That was a good voice check. We might ask you for one more. And then uh, for the Dragon crew, you also have a go for 6.3. That's opening the location 2.3 and checking for debris. Dragon copies 6.3 and work. If you're just tuning in, you're getting a live look. On the left of your screen is a look inside the Crew Dragon on the Demo 2 mission. On the right, the International Space Station. Bob Bacon. Dragon on the big loop. We are ready for uh, 6.4 and section 4 of the LIO instructions. And station, we copy. Dragon crew, you are go at 6.4. It worked.
This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station, losing video communication from the International Space Station. It will only be momentary. We'll have those views back to see Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley enter the International Space Station. When they do, it'll be the first time that humans will enter th through this hatch for the first time in nine years. Dragon, so we had to get uh, had to load the procedure from my iPad and hand it into them. So that's what took a little longer. We copy, Chris. Station Houston on two for Chris Wynn, convenient PO requests an additional voice check through the mic. And Chris, we're not hearing you in MCC. Uh, we are apparently getting it through to PAO, just stand by. Chris, PA is working calm. Reconfig, I'll call you if we're ready for another check. Houston and SpaceX Endeavor in 6.5, Lyle cartridge is sealed and installed. SpaceX copies. Station Houston on two for Chris. We wanted you to confirm that the mic is in channel one. It needs to be in channel one. A thought here is that it could have been bumped over to two. Chris, we see you trying. We're still not hearing you in MCC. We're working on it.
And Chris, uh, nothing in MCC. We see you trying. Uh, the word here is that as long as that is in channel one, uh, any problems past that point are on our end, so we're looking into it. We'll be right back to you. Station Houston, we're ready for another voice check through the mic. Station Houston, we have you loud and clear through the mic. Thank you. Spatex Dragon on the big loop in uh, seven decimal one. Spatex here. Okay, Anna, in uh, seven decimal one, it appears that the uh, ABV Inner Bravo is open as well as the PPRV ISO valve. I copy that ABV Inner Bravo appears to be open as well as PPRV ISO valve. Go ahead and cycle them uh, to close if you're good with that call. Yes, we are good with that call and appreciate the status. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just tuning in, hatches were open at 12.02 p.m. Central Time. We are moments away from Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley entering the International Space Station. Again, this is Mission Control Houston, moments away from Bob and Doug entering the International Space Station. Shortly after they enter, we will conduct a welcome ceremony. There will be uh, VIPs here in Mission Control Houston, Ficker 1. Looks like they're all closed visually now. We are uh, in 8 decimal 3 for both SpaceX and Houston. Dragon arrival configuration is complete. SpaceX copies all valves appear closed visually now and arrival configuration complete. Excellent to hear. Houston copies. And with that endeavor, welcome to the International Space Station. Please come aboard. Never copies with pleasure. We'll be there in a second. We have Bob Bankin from SpaceX Demo 2 Mission entering the International Space Station. Followed by Doug Hurley.
Management Station, Houston. We see you, and it, it's a great-looking photograph. Uh, so thanks for that. Stand by one. We'll call you when we're, we're ready for the event in the next few seconds. Got a whole bunch of very uh, happy and grateful people making their way into MCC right now. Demo 2 crew now aboard the International Space Station. They entered at 12.22 p.m. Central Time. The station at the time was 262 statute miles over Turkmenistan. Crew all gathered in front of the cameras at the Node 2 forward end of the International Space Station. Just behind them is the hatchway to the Crew Dragon on its Demo 2 mission. We're standing by for a welcome ceremony. We'll have VIPs here in Mission Control Houston ready to greet the crew. And station, we're just about ready. Stand by. All right, station, it's Houston on Space Ground 2. Confirm that you are ready for the event. Houston, this station, we are ready for the event. Copy that. And, sir, Administrator Bridenstine, welcome to MCC. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the NASA Administrator. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear, sir. Welcome to the Space Station. Thank you, Chris. It's good to see you. And welcome to Bob and Doug. I, uh, I will tell you, the whole world saw this mission, and we are so, so proud of everything you have done for our country and, in fact, to inspire the world. We sure appreciate that, sir. It's uh, obviously been our honor to be just a small part of this. Uh, we have to give credit to SpaceX, the commercial crew program, and of course NASA. It's great to get the United States back in the uh, crewed launch business, and uh, we're just really glad to be on board this uh, magnificent complex. Well, we have some uh, some VIPs with us here, and I'm, I'm sure they have some questions that they'd like to ask you, but uh, I have one of my own before I turn it over. And I just wanted to, to find out if you guys got any sleep on your way up there the last, uh, I'd say, I got 19 hours. Did you guys get any sleep? Yeah, I think a lot of folks in Hawthorne were asking the same question, sir, but uh, we did get probably a good seven hours or so opportunity for sleep and uh, I did succeed at sleep and I Doug did as well so uh, the first night is always a little bit of a challenge but uh, the Dragon was a, a slick vehicle and uh, we had good airflow and so we had a excellent excellent evening and uh, just excited to be back uh, in low earth orbit again amazing well <clears throat> one of the people that uh, that is here with us today is um, Senator Ted Cruz, and of course he's a huge advocate of America's space program, and he's been, uh, you know, somebody who has helped us so much as we transition from one administration to the next administration. And the reason missions like this can have success is because of continuity of purpose. Um, and Senator Ted Cruz was a leader on a bill 
called the American uh, uh, the NASA Transition Authorization Act, and um, because of that, uh, we have had a lot of political support, and we're very grateful for his leadership. Senator Cruz, would you like to say a few words? Well, congratulations, gentlemen. The eyes of the world are upon you, and everyone is proud of you. All of the America is watching you, and today and yesterday represent big, big days. Uh, we're looking at a decade since we've had American astronauts launched on an American ship from American soil. And I can tell you I sat with my wife and kids in our living room watching on TV yesterday, and I suspect we did what just about everyone watching did, including both of you. We just held our breath as it took off. And we're glad to see you've landed safely. We're glad to see you've docked. Uh, and, and so let me ask you, that Dragon is, is, is an amazing vehicle. How does she handle? It uh, flew just like it was supposed to. It was. Uh, we had a couple opportunities to uh, take it out for a spin, so to speak, uh, once uh, after we got into orbit last night, and again uh, today, about uh, 20 minutes before we docked. And uh, my compliments to the folks back at uh, Hawthorne and SpaceX for uh, how well it flew. It uh, is exactly like the simulator, and. Uh, we couldn't be uh, happier about the performance of the vehicle. What do you guys hope to accomplish in your time on the International Space Station? Well, while we're on board the space station, of course, uh, with the new spacecraft, we do hope to put her through her paces. And so the good ship Endeavor is going to get a lot of a uh, checkout over the next uh, week or two here and hopefully we'll be able to uh, declare her operational and Doug and I will be able to take some burden off of uh, Chris and his crewmates, Ivan and Anatoly, so that uh, we can keep the space station operating at its uh, peak possibilities. So we're looking forward to contributing any way that we can and uh, like I said, trying to keep space station as productive as possible. As a country, we're in the midst of a tough week. We're seeing protests, we're seeing a lot of anger, we're seeing violence. And I have to say this launch and y'all's docking is, is, is a powerful inspiration of what we can do when we come together, of the power of unity, uh, the power of ingenuity. And, and, and so I guess the last question I would ask you is, is, since you have the opportunity to address, in particular all the young people in America, uh, what would you tell them in terms of what we can do when we can come together? You know, that's a great question. Nine years ago, uh, just about exactly nine years ago, we docked with Atlantis uh, on STS-135, the last flight of the space shuttle program, a 30-year program. And folks at SpaceX, folks at NASA, the commercial crew program put their heads together and worked diligently year after year making sacrifices working hard and then nine years later American launch capability was restored and this is just one one effort that we can show for the ages in this dark time that we've had over the past several months uh, to kind of inspire especially the young people in the United States, to, to reach for these lofty goals and work hard and look what you can accomplish. Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Thank you, Thank Senator you, Cruz. We have another very special guest here that represents the Johnson Space Center. Uh, and, of course, it's my, my good friend from the House of Representatives, Dr. Brian Babin. And I want to be clear, he also was a big part of the NASA Transition Authorization Act, which gave us the continuity of purpose to make this uh, happen today. So, uh, gentlemen, here is Dr. Brian Babin from the state of Texas. Thank you. It's great to be with you guys. It, uh, I was at the launch yesterday. I just want to say a, a huge congratulations. And, uh, you know, there was a thunderstorm that blew in about 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so before uh, liftoff. 
and uh, <laughs> it was uh, in doubt there for a minute, but it was a, a, just an enormous achievement. I just want to say thank you for you guys. Uh, really appreciate uh, what you're doing for America and uh, the crew that's already been up there, Chris, and your uh, your two fellow Russians. Uh, what a what, to give you a great big thank you as well. And I have a son who is a Navy SEAL, and I want to thank you for your service there too, Chris. And uh, also, uh, I would like to just see what what uh, what. I know you've said that the, that the, uh, the 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 craft, the dragon handled uh, very well, but I want to see how how it compares uh, with uh, with the space shuttle. If one of you would address that, I would appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. It certainly has been a, a long endeavor for for us and our our name ship, uh, namesake spacecraft. We're uh, proud to have her on board the International Space Station after all that the teams around the country and across America have done to, to get us here today. Uh, as far as a comparison with the uh, space shuttle, uh, both Doug and I took a few minutes uh, while we were accomplishing the approach and docking to, in our spare time, talk a little bit about it. We were surprised a little bit at uh, how smooth things were off the pad. The space shuttle is a, a pretty rough ride uh, heading into orbit with the solid rocket boosters. And our expectation was, as we continued with the flight into second stage, that things would uh, basically get a lot smoother than the space shuttle did. But uh, uh, Dragon was uh, huffing and puffing all the way into orbit, and uh, we were definitely driving or riding a dragon all the way up. And so uh, it was not quite the same ride, the smooth ride, as the space shuttle was uh, up to Miko. A little bit less Gs, but a, a little bit more uh, alive is probably the best way I would describe it. Anything else, Doug? No. Sounds good. Bob, what is Miko? Sorry, I have to apologize for uh, actually using the term uh, Miko. It's a little bit confusing between the space shuttle and the Dragon vehicle. So it's a uh, main engine cutoff is uh, what Miko stands for. Those happened at different times in flight for the uh, two vehicles. For the space shuttle, that was when you were all the way in orbit. For Dragon, that was just uh, a little bit after two minutes. And then we had the single engine cutoff for second stage uh, when we achieved orbit. So that time under the single engine, under Dragon, uh, with one engine, was uh, more of an experience than the, the shuttle was uh, for that six and a half minutes or so that we were under that, uh, under that second stage motor. Well, I would just like to say, uh, in, in fact, Doug, did you have something you wanted to add there? I met your mother and father yesterday, Doug, and uh, great, uh, great folks. They're very, very proud of their son. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, they en enjoyed the uh, launch. I know uh, for parents, uh, it can probably be pretty nerve-wracking for them to experience uh, a launch. This was their uh, third, so uh, I'm glad uh, everything went okay, and hopefully, it was a good show. We haven't uh, obviously heard or seen any video yet, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, seeing the launch replayed sometime. I can assure you that it was a great show. Uh, it was one of the one of the uh, treats of uh, of my lifetime. I would have to say, and many many other folks that were sitting there looking all across the, the country uh, and, and even the world. And I can tell you, as, as Senator Cruz said, we've gone through some really really rough times over the last few days, and to have uh, that successful launch, uh, you know, the the public private partnership between NASA. And SpaceX, and you guys being so well trained, uh, and having it go off without a hitch, was a tremendous blessing for our country. And uh, I can't tell you how many uh, emails and communications I've gotten from people that uh, are, who are so uh, disturbed by what was, what's been going on, transpiring around the country. To have uh, the great news uh, and the wonderful uh, lift off and everything going without a hitch. So I just want to say God bless both of you. Thank you so very much. Bless the rest of you folks up there as well. We thank our Russian partners. And uh, 
Thank you, Chris. Uh, we are, uh, y'all are all in our prayers, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing you, you you successfully complete your mission and uh, back on safely on Earth. God bless. Thank you very much. Yeah, and just so you guys are aware, uh, the show was in fact spectacular. Um, the ratings on NASA TV beat everyone else. Not just some of them, it beat all of them, and that includes, <laughs> yeah. just, just so everybody is aware, the whole world saw this. Um, it trended number one on Twitter. It, it was uh, the, the, the number one thing talked about on social media in general. Um, this, was, this was an amazing moment, um, and it represents a transition in how we do space flight from the United States of America. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate rockets and capsules the way we used to. We're going to partner with commercial industry for access to low Earth orbit, um, and those partnerships are going to enable our providers to get customers that are not NASA and drive down our costs, and we're going to have numerous providers that are competing on cost and innovation and safety, and we're going to have more access to low Earth orbit than ever before. And this business model, now that it's been proven on, on uh, commercial resupply of the International Space Station, now commercial crew to the International Space Station, this model is going to apply, and I know Senator Cruz has this near and dear to him, when we go to the moon. And, of course, when we go to the moon, it's going to be done um, because of the great people here at the Johnson Space Center and so many other centers across the United States of America. But when we go to the moon, we're going to land on the surface of the moon with commercial landers. Um, and, of course, we're very proud of uh, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program being managed right here out of the Johnson Space Center as well so that we can take small payloads to the surface of the moon. And all of this is leading up to an amazing day uh, where we have humans living and working for long periods of time on the surface of the moon but doing it with a purpose, and that purpose, of course, is to go to Mars. Um, humanity is going to explore more and be able to go further than ever before because of the public-private partnerships. Um, we all know <laughs> that if the government is creating the demand and the government is creating the supply, we will always be limited. But when we have partners that are interested in exploring commercially and, and doing the things that are necessary um, you know, to, to get capital investment, um, then we're all going to end up better. So I want to just say the whole world saw this. This is a new era in human space flight, and we are so grateful for the service of not just our two astronauts that embarked on this mission, but the 100,000-plus people that participate in, it, uh, in this mission, uh, everything from the suppliers to the main contractors um, to the NASA team, the SpaceX team. Uh, what an amazing day um, for, for our country and, in fact, for the world. I'm going to turn it over for a second uh, to my deputy, Jim Moorhard, um, who's been a great deputy at NASA. Gentlemen, congratulations. You know, Jim's mentioned going to the moon. And yesterday and today, one, you've inspired the Artemis generation, which is our next generation. And that's what this is about. It's really bringing the children that we've got and our grandchildren forward so they'll be the ones that are going into deep space. This is the dawn of a new era, and we just thank you for being at the beginning of it. Thank you so much. Uh, it was absolutely our pleasure, uh, but it's just a huge team effort across the board from SpaceX to NASA that uh, made this all happen. We were just the lucky guys that got to fly the rocket uh, yesterday. I have a, a question for Chris Cassidy. Um, you know, our, our crew here uh, decided to, to, to be about three days late. Um, You've got to work them overtime, I presume, now to get them caught up on all the activities that they missed out on. Any plans for them? Cleaning, probably. 
easy. Well, uh, the day they missed out on was a good one for them to skip. It was Saturday house cleaning, and uh, and I, but I took care of it for them. We'll we'll catch up next next weekend. Uh, but in all seriousness, we've we've got a few things to take care of tonight. Make sure we're all safe, and we know the plan in case something bad happens. Uh, and then. We're looking forward to some operational stuff later in the month. Maybe we'll get outside and do some spacewalks. Uh, and our efforts in, those, in these coming weeks will, will be in that effort. So we're, we're all super excited to have two more crewmates to the Expedition 63 uh, team. Awesome. And, of course, uh, here in Houston, this is the home of the astronaut office. And the, the Johnson Space Center is led by Mark Geyer. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark for a few comments. Thank you, Jim. Hey, it's great to see all of you there. Good to see you, Bob and Doug. I know we, we talked a few days ago. You look a little taller uh, than I remember you. And uh, But I also want to thank Hellas. I want to thank Anatoly and Iman uh, uh, and, of course, Chris for what you guys have been doing uh, since you all arrived. And I know there's been a ton to do, and you've been really busy, and I appreciate that. So I also like this visual of our international partnership. We have had a tremendous partnership with uh, Roscosmos, and we will continue to do so. Um, and uh, But I do, it is nice to see crew arrive from this side of the space station. So that was pretty cool uh, after nine years. Uh, I did have one question for Chris, though. What might you do to ensure that Bob and Doug stay longer? Do you have any strategy there? Well, we'll slow down uh, the rate of uh, which I'm eating food, and maybe we can uh, stretch out our, our our consumables a little bit. But uh, uh, that's a great question. We'll have to come up with some conniving scheme here in the next few days. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Look forward to greeting the, the three of you eventually back in Ellington uh, after your work is complete. Thank you. And, of course, Mark Geyer has an amazing deputy, uh, Vanessa Weish, if you'd like to uh, come and say a few words. Thank you, Jim. Hi, guys. You look really good. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of everybody here, we just want to thank you. Uh, it was an amazing launch, and um, we, we love seeing the docking. You guys all look really good. Uh, just thank you for all that you're doing, and we can't wait for you to, um, to return, but not too soon. Station wants you to get a lot of work done, so looking forward to all of that. But thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Vanessa. We appreciate that. All right, we also have with, with us Steve Jerzyk, who is the Associate Administrator for the agency. Uh, for people who don't know what that is, that, of course, is the Chief Operating Officer of the agency. But he also ran the Flight Readiness Review for this mission. He did a, a really a, an amazing job, um, and and I can't say enough about his leadership at the agency. Steve, if you'd like to say a few words, ask a few questions. Hey guys, it is just great to see you all on the station. I can't tell you how um, I was. I, I, I my adrenaline shut down uh, when you guys opened the hatch. I mean, I've just been on edge ever since ever, ever since yesterday, and the weather cleared. I can't tell you how great it's been to. Uh, to see you on station. Um, it has been a team effort. Um, I felt like the last two years I've kind of been part of the team, uh, working through issues, you know, and it's been a heck of a year and a half with, uh, you know, Demo 1 and, uh, and the in-flight abort test and working through issues like parachutes and the, the escape system, and I just could not be more proud of the team for, for getting to this point. Um, it's amazing, and, uh, and you obviously have been part of that. I really appreciate you all showing up in Washington, D.C., at our reviews, and because the last thing we do at those reviews is look at you all, because you guys are the risk takers, and make sure you're okay with where we are and where we're headed. So I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate your active participation in that, and uh, I could not be more, like I said, more proud of the team, and uh, congratulations, and it is awesome to see you guys on station. Well, thank you, sir. We're just uh, proud to be a part of the team that got to bring uh, spaceflight back to the Florida coast. I appreciated the comment earlier that it was nice to uh, see a vehicle come to the forward portion of the space station. But I'll tell you what, that's the only way Doug and I know how to do it. <laughs> so uh, thanks to the team for uh, providing it to happen our way. We, uh, we appreciate that. 
Well, Bob and Doug, um, just so just so you're aware, I'm I'm get, being given the the, the rap signal. Doug, uh, Doug, did you have something to say before we wrap it up here? Oh no, sir. Uh, we're just uh, happy to be here, and uh, Chris is going to put us to work, and uh, hopefully we will fit in and not mess too many things up. I have no doubt that you guys are going to do amazing work. Um, I just want you to know um, that the president came to the launch and the vice president came to the launch. About half the cabinet was at the launch. We had members of Congress and members of the Senate from both sides of the aisle. Um, and this was uh, an amazing moment of, of, of unity for the nation. It was an amazing moment for the whole world uh, to, to look up. Uh, in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic and some other challenges, uh, we were able to have this very, very special moment uh, where we could all look at the future and say that things are going to be brighter tomorrow than they are today. And you um, and the NASA team and the SpaceX team gave us that opportunity, and for that we are so, so grateful. I would also be remiss as the NASA administrator if I didn't promote what comes next. And, of course, this is the beginning. We are now launching to low Earth orbit again, but we will soon be going to the moon. We will be going to the moon sustainably with commercial partners and international partners. Uh, we're going to use the resources of the moon to learn how to live and work for long periods of time. Ultimately, we're going to take all of that knowledge and we're going to go to Mars. And of course, this time when we go to the moon, we go with a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps that includes women, which is why we call the program Artemis named after the twin sister of Apollo, and she, in Greek mythology, was the goddess of the moon. This is the beginning. There is so, so, so much more to come, and I'm glad that our representatives of the Johnson Space Center are here because we're going to be asking them to fund this project. <laughs> and, uh, and what an amazing day that you guys have, have given us. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you from not just me and the people here, but from the United States of America, and people all around the world. Um, I'm more popular on Twitter than I've ever been, and it's because of you guys. Thank you. To the crew on the International Thank you to all Space of you. Station. Thank, thank you very much. Hey, Chris, we ask that you just hold your position for a few minutes. There's, a, of course, a, a number of photos we'd like to take. And then a quick note uh, for those down here in the room. To Senator Cruz, Congressman Babin, Administrator Bridenstine, Director uh, Geyer, and all of our distinguished visitors, thank you for your participation in today's historic event, and thank you for the leadership that has enabled it. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station.
That concludes our coverage of the SpaceX Demo 2 mission in conjunction with NASA. On behalf of all the teams that participated in this mission, from Hawthorne to Houston to Mission Control to the Kennedy Space Center, this is Mission Control Houston.